In this video we're going to look at another type of lifting machine called a screw jack and a screw jack is very similar to the type of jack that you would have in your car where you would typically have a scissor jack and what we do with both a scissor jack and a screw jack is we rotate a thread which causes the lifting motion. Now this screw jack is a simplified version for the purpose of explanation and what we have shown in black is we have a static framework so that framework will be sitting on the ground and then running through the center we have our screw thread. Now hopefully you can visualize what would happen. Every time we rotate that screw, the mass is gonna either go up or down depending on the direction of rotation. Now if we go through one full revolution, so if you can imagine pushing this handle into the page and going round one full revolution, then the distance traveled will be equal to the pitch of the thread. And by the pitch, we mean this small distance here, the distance between two threads. If we do a second revolution, the object will move the same distance again, the distance of the pitch. So basically what we can see here is to move a very small distance of 10 millimeters in this case, the pitch, we would have to do one full revolution of the lever shown there. Now I've indicated that the lever length is 550 mil and we will treat that as the distance from the center of the thread to the outside of the lever. So indicated on our diagram there is our lever length. So one full revolution round the circle will give us a change in height for the mass of just 10 millimeters. Now the advantage of moving through a large distance to achieve a very small lifting distance is that the force requirement is going to be a lot lower. And in the last video, we talked about how the work done when applying the force is equal to the work done for lifting the load, providing that there's no losses in that system. So if we take what we know then, work done is force times distance. So on this lever, we're gonna apply a force, F subscript A, because it's the applied force. And we're going to move it through a distance, and again we'll call it DA for the distance traveled by the applied force, or one full revolution in this case. And that's going to equal the force being lifted, which we'll see in a moment is the same as the weight of the object, times the distance being lifted. All we've done there is a simple energy balance. Force applied times distance the force is applied through equals the force lifted times the distance that the object's being lifted. Now the thing that we're trying to find in this case is the applied force. We want to know how much force we need to apply to that lever in order to lift that object. So we can do a simple rearrangement. We can divide each side of that equation by D subscript A, and I'll use my notation E S to indicate each side. That's our operation. And by doing so, F A is going to equal F L, the force lifted, times D L, the distance lifted, over D A, the distance traveled by the applied force. Now if we refer to our variables on the left there, we have a pitch distance of 10 millimetres, but we're going to need to convert that to metres. We're going to work in SI units throughout the question. So to get from millimetres to metres, we divide by 1,000. 10 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.01 metres. We also have a lever length of 550 millimetres. Once again, we need that in metres. So if we divide that by 1,000, we'll get 0 0.55 metres. So if we consider what's happening here, we're going to apply a force, FA, and the force that we're going to be lifting is the weight of the object. Remember, if we have an object of mass M, then that's going to have a weight, W, the weight of the object. Weight is a force, whereas mass isn't a force. So if we return to our equation, we've got the force applied equals the weight, now I know we're using W for weight here and previously we used W for work, but we just need to take care and make sure that we input the weight of the object into our formula. We've then got the distance that the load's going to move. We could do this in any ratio. We could do two revolutions and how far the mass would move. We could do five revolutions and how far the mass would move. But the most obvious or the most simple way is to consider how far the mass moves when we do one full revolution on our screw jack and the distance moved there will be our pitch distance, P. So we've got the weight times the pitch distance, P, over the distance travelled by the applied load. 
Now if we imagine looking at our screw jack from the top, then hopefully you can see that the distance travelled by the applied force is going to be represented by a circle. Because it's following a circular path. And if we do one full revolution, that's going to be equal to the circumference of the circle. So one full revolution is equal to the circumference of the circle, and circumference is calculated by doing 2 pi r. Well, in this case, that circle has a circumference 2 pi r, but our length is equivalent to the radius. I'll add this to the diagram, length l. Our length of the lever is equivalent to the radius, because that's the distance from the centre of the screw jack to the outside of the handle. So if we add that to our formula, distance travelled by the applied force over on the right hand side is going to be 2 pi times the length of the lever. That represents the circumference of the path of motion. We're just missing one piece of information. We don't yet have the weight of our object. So on the left hand side under our variables, weight is mass times gravity. And the mass of the object is given as 1800 kilograms, and gravity is 9.81, giving us a weight of that object equal to 17658 newtons. And I'm going to keep that in newtons because I'm going to input it back into my formula. So the force applied then is the weight 17658 times the pitch distance in metres, or the distance travelled by the load, divided by the distance travelled by the applied force, 2 pi times the lever length, 0.55. Now running that through my calculator gives an applied force equal to 51.1 newtons. So let's just pause for a moment and think about what that shows us. Basically, what we're doing is we're lifting a mass of 1800 kilograms, so a significant mass, through a distance of 10 millimetres. And we're lifting that mass by applying a force as small as 51 newtons. So 51 newtons of force is enabling us to lift 17,658 newtons of weight. Now the payoff is the distance travelled. We're only lifting the mass a distance of 10 millimetres. But the distance travelled, given by 2 pi times 0.55, is 3.46 metres. So this distance here is 3.46 metres to two decimal places. So let's have a look what each of those ratios tells us. We have a force ratio. I'm going to call it ratio subscript F for force. And that force ratio is the lifted force over the applied force, or in our case, the weight over the applied force. And that gives us 17658 divided by 51.1, which is a force ratio of 346 to the nearest whole number. So we're lifting 346 times the weight when compared to the force we're applying. But the distance or the movement ratio, and I'm going to call this R subscript M, is the distance travelled by the applied force over the distance travelled by the load. And please note, when we calculate the force ratio, it's the lifted force over the applied force. And when we calculate the movement ratio, it's the distance travelled by the applied force over the distance travelled by the load. And what we'll notice is the distance travelled by the applied force, 3.46 metres, over the distance travelled by the load, 0.01, will give us the same ratio, 346, providing there's no losses in the system. So our force ratio, given at the top, is equal to our movement ratio, given at the bottom there.